I'm Elizabeth Turner, a professor at the Harkwell School of Earth Sciences and the recipient of the Geological Association of Canada's Howard Street Robinson Medal for 2020. This is a Career Achievement Award given by the Precambrian and Mineral Deposits Divisions in alternating years. It's a particular honour for me to receive this award for 2020, a Precambrian Medal year, because Precambrian geology is one of the pillars of our mandate in the Harkwell School of Earth Sciences. The Precambrian is arguably the most compelling part of Earth's history, encompassing the time when Earth went from uh, being a molten ball through to a time of recognizable plate tectonics, an oxygenated atmosphere, and organisms that we can recognize and identify. The trajectory from four and a half billion years ago to half a million years ago represents 90% of Earth's history and is the wildest story you could imagine, no matter how jaded you are, and all of it supported by wonderful, compelling evidence recorded in rocks. We're living in the golden age of geoscience. There's so much to figure out about how Earth works and how it came to be the way it is, tectonically, biologically, and geochemically. Even regular issue people, such as myself, can make a significant contribution. And many of the biggest questions are in the first 90% of Earth's history, the Precambrian. When I teach Earth system, Earth system history, I like to tell students that if they were to time travel back to the Precambrian, their minds would be blown and then they would die. There's simply no exaggerating how weird and different the planet was then. The atmosphere and the ocean largely devoid of oxygen, no life on land. The one-way arrow of Earth's biological and geochemical evolution, together with plate tectonics, have collectively dictated everything about why Earth is the way it is and why it works the way it does. And I truly, I really do mean everything um, from the types and the timing and geotectonic locations of ore deposits, hydrocarbons, industrial minerals, and the other resources, um, to the timing and location where life first emerged and why and how early life, um, bacterial life eventually evolved into more complex cell types and the enigmatic early evolution of the more complex organisms such as animals and fungi and the complex food webs that they inhabited as much as a billion years ago. This history is recorded in the glorious rocks in the Precambrian. And much of this history is present only in Precambrian sedimentary rocks, the only rocks that directly encode information about the nature of Earth's surface environments and conditions through time. Um, the strikingly changeable composition of Earth's atmosphere and ocean and the nature distribution and function of Earth's ecosystems play into the much bigger picture. One can't obtain this information without accessing the right rocks. Unless you're a geochemist, rocks don't come to you you have to go to them to decipher their tales and their four-dimensional um, mysterious um, history. And that means fieldwork, lots of it. Canada is graced with a wide range of well-preserved Precambrian sedimentary rocks, and it's been my privilege to, to work on some of them. Some of my favorite um, Precambrian basins are in the Arctic Islands and in Northwest Territories, where the rocks record the assembly and disaggregation of one of Earth's two iconic supercontinents, Rodinia, and contain ore deposits associated with both of those tectonic events uh, between about a billion and 600 million years ago. They also contain a wide range of very sparsely examined evidence for the early evolution of life. For example, the growth of huge reefs, the same size as impressive coral reefs today, but made entirely by bacteria. Um, and the oldest evidence of um, animal containing ecosystems, animal-like predation, the early evidence of complex food webs. These phenomena are also inextricably linked to the location and the timing of sedimentary rock hosted ore deposits. And because the continents we're familiar with today executed a wonderful dance among themselves ever since their formation, there are strong links among their sedimentary basins and ore systems that can be untangled using one basin as an analog for another. So for example, did you know that the prolific Central African copper belt is hosted by Neoproterozoic sedimentary rocks that are virtually identical to, the, to a succession in Northwestern Canada. They even had similar metallogenic histories. So if you understand the information encoded in the rocks, the parallels can be quite breathtaking. Let me be quite clear. I'm a field pig more than anything. <laughs> field work is the essence of geology. There's nothing like having ones intellectual and physical challenges all rolled into one puzzle. It's addictively intoxicating and, and becoming good at field da data gathering takes a whole life and uh, working in remote areas takes even more time and resources. So I've been fortunate to have over 30 years 
to accumulate the field and um, analytical experience that lets me get at least a glimpse into the complexities of the Precambrian world, the Earth's surface environments of the Precambrian, its life, its ore systems. It, it has truly been the greatest privilege of my life. When I emerged from primordial scum, I had the good fortune to be mentored by a few remarkable, very generous people who were strangely willing to make that dubious investment. And I've also had the good fortune to, since then to work with some wonderful graduate students whose devotion to thesis completion and publication of their studies has allowed me to continue to get the funding required to support further students. So my nod to them is on this screen. And perhaps most importantly, doing research and training students takes money, taxpayer money and industry money. And we're fortunate in this country to have reasonably accessible resources for doing field research. And I give a special nod to NSERC and to our government surveys, whose broad perspective on the need to understand Canada's geological history um, provides the essential framework for both mineral exploration and blue sky research on uh, Earth system history. The Robinson Medal is normally associated with a Canada-wide lecture tour, um, but because of the pandemic, um, this hasn't happened yet. However, I'm, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to meet people and talk science um, once that um, occasion to interact in person becomes possible once again.